Good morning, everyone. I'm Mike Tang. Um, I'm part of Galaxy Australia team. So today, um, I'm introduce you um, how to get the tools into Galaxies. Um, with me, uh, Dr. Cam will actually present thing with the hands-on part. So the first part of the this workshop only present you with all the basics uh, of the Galaxy wrappers, as well as how you get your tools and find your tools um, so on, online. Galaxy is a web-based platform for conduct uh, accessible, reproducible, and transparent computational biological research. It's widely used by the researcher worldwide. Galaxy includes thousands of popular tools for analysis and processing of biological data. If you are a tool developer, wrapping your tool for Galaxies is a great way to make your tool available to the research community. So what you are seeing here is a Galaxy layer on the left-hand side that contains a list of available tools installed on any Galaxy instance. In our case, in Australia, we are actually these tools should be available or installed on Galaxy Australia. In the center page of the Galaxy layer that you're seeing now is a graph flank. It comes with um, the input parameter, output format, and some optional optional parameters you can play with, or you can put um, with um, the size of the image you want to export, as well as other parameters. So this is the layer or UI of the wrapper uh, for Grand Flame. On the right hand side, on this galaxy layer, which is the result of the output of each one, the tool that you selected. So green spin, um, the tool produced and run successfully. So that, this is the overview of the galaxy layer. Once a de two developer develop the tool, um, eventually the tool will make available through the Galaxy tool sheds, which allow um, the other researcher or the other group of Gal Galaxy team to install the, to the tools um, from um, Galaxy tool sheds. So in here, um, you can search your tool that you are looking for um, under the repository uh, by category here. For example, you can search BWI tool and the tool of interest here. And if the tool is available on the tool shed, it will be listed underneath. Okay, how do you how to get your tools into galaxies? So before you start, um, this, this step, um, is very important to making sure that you know you're not uh, wrapping the tool people already wrap that already exists on the tool sheds. So just go to the tool, Galaxy tool shed and find if anybody or other people already, already developed this tool or wrap this tool. If the tool is not available there, just find if um, the tool already have the condom package um, because it's easier for wrapping the tool using the condom package instead of building the tool from the source code. Next, um, wrap your tool. So making sure we follow this step, um, touch your tool on command line, um, build and test your XML in Plotnemo, then you can plot, uh, publish uh, to the tool shed with Plotnemo or tools uh, you see on GitHub. I want to actually emphasize here that, you know, this is really important to test your tool on the command line with a appropriate smaller data sets. 
um, would actually help you to making sure that you can write the test units inside the XML, which is the wrapper of galaxies. And the plug Nemo, when you push in or testing this tool inside um, with the XML file, and the plot Nemo will actually uh, evaluate and assess the output before you can push it to the two sheds. If the plot Nemo passes all the tests, test unit inside the XML file with the small, small data that you provided, and it can be pushed to the two sheds. Otherwise, it will have a problem to make your tool available on the two sheds. So testing your tool on the common line with a smaller data set is really important, essential to finish your wrapping process. Um, the size of the testing data we recommend not exit one megabyte because so this tool will also make available on the GitHub. So the GitHub has some limitation to host um, the data set. The size of the data set exceeds a certain size. And once you've done um, the tool wrapping process, then you can um push push it to the uh, two sheds and if you want to actually make your tool available on the galaxy instance just make a request to the galaxy admins and then the galaxy admin will install the tool on that uh, galaxy instance for you so what to include in the wrapper what you can see on this slide on the left hand side is a wrapper interface. And behind the interface is an XML code. So, as you can see here uh, on the top section in the XML code, has a corresponding um, UI show in the wrapper. In the tool ID, as you can see in the gray box here, like Graphlang to produce graphical output of an input tree, Galaxy version 1.0.0.0. It has a corresponding sections in the, uh, in the XML. So making sure this goes into the XML because this is actually a requirement. And then go down the list of you know, the XML uh, code. There's a macro sections. Uh, we will come back to that later to explain a little bit more details. And what's important is the input the, and the parameter that you're going to use for these particular tools. Each of the tool has its own different set of parameters. So the list of parameters for each tool will go on and on. So this is kind of like a simplified version to explain what it looks like in the XML code. So you have the input um, tag come with the parameters um, uh, XML tag as well. And there's an output. So you can actually define your output based on um, the parameter offered by brand flame. So the list can go on and on as well, can grow really big. But in here, it's just um, showing that the output allows you to export PNG file. I believe that's also like um, the image can export as PDF for other two as well, but you can put it, if the tools get improved or grand flying, they want to like export it as an HTML page or PDF, they can they go in here. So. Yeah, this is the output um, and filter process. And then the size of the image that you can see, um, you can define the size of the image, and, but this has to be offered by the grand flame. 
So you can't actually make this parameter out of the blue without having the blank friend as that parameter alpha. So just making sure that that's the reason why testing your tool with the command line is really important to making sure that you have all the parameters that you need to be to implement um, in this wrapper. So underneath is a help section. You could put some help section to make the tool more um, easy to understand and help the user to understand this tool better. And then last is just citation. So you can include the citations in um, the XML code as well. So that's the first line in the previous wrapper. So that's actually a fixed format. So you need to follow this um, requirement to make um, the tools ID available as well as the version. So the versioning is also important for both Galaxy and the tools. So uh, the tool has its own versions. Um, the Galaxy has, Galaxy means the wrapper versions. Each tool, when the tools get updated, for, for example, in this case, Grand Flame, it is the version 1.1.3 here, and then the wrappers number two, meaning that they started with the Galaxy Zero, the wrapper, and then over time, the Grand Flame um, tools added more parameters or improve over time then the Galaxy wrapper need to update as well. So it's actually from zero, one, and two. So that's the uh, Galaxy to indicate this wrapper is a, a version number two. And the profile is a minimum Galaxy version that should be required to run this tool. Um, based on the IUC uh, recommendations, not older than one year. Um, current Galaxy release at 23.1. So next year, if the 24.1s come out, we we recommend you we rec we recommend uh, to developer to use 24.1. So that's actually not older than one year. So in this slide, it just um, how the grand flame get invoked to execute inside Galaxy. So on the top, you can see the grand flame has a requirement sections and command sections. So in the requirement sections, um, in the previous few slides uh, before we um, before you start wrapping the tool making sure it's on the conduct package. This is a section that tell the Galaxy if the Galaxy currently doesn't have this tool installed, it will actually go to the conda and install it on the first run of this tool. So it will go to conda pack, uh, conda uh, manager, uh, management system and find the um, corresponding version of this tool and install on galaxies and you can run this tool without knowing the tool being installed. So that's really important that you know if the tools already available on that, then you know it's pretty straightforward to run this wrapper. So in the requirement section here that I want to actually just um, add one more thing here. It's so not only the conda allowed to you, you to be integrated into the your wrapper, the Docker and the Galaxy wrapper also support Docker or you know the Galaxy platform. So some tips here for command and requirements. Um, we will go into details later. So if you we have some repeated um, variables that you need to use or re re repeated option you need to use or even the reference database you need to use, you can actually make it available to the macro SML. So it makes your tool more 
tidy and clean. So you do not have to put everything in a single wrapper. Um, I can give you one example that, you know, if your tools like has a list of sub tool, which is like BCF tools handling, you know, variant callings, then you probably want to actually um, develop a multiple sub tools by using the same macros. So that way you do not have to um, go and put some of the repeated elements in the different sub tools. So you can just use the tool of the elements defined in the macro file and reuse it in other tools, in other sub tools for that, uh, for that particular tool like PCF. So in the Galaxy terminology, we call it suite. So you, you have a suite of tools that you develop, but using only one macro for all frequently used variables or reusable elements. So next, which is actually, um, I want to introduce you to Chia templates because the Chia templates is, is a big part of uh, developing the wrapper. So it's a Python power template engine code generator. It may be used as a standalone utility and combined with other tools. Chia has many potential uses, but web developer looking for a viable alternative to ASP, JSP, PHP, PSP are expected to be principal under user groups. But you know, this template is awesome. It's uh, really, um, it, it really functional and um, we use it uh, in our wrapper and we'll show you next. In this slide, just quickly, just um, show you how um, an example of the macro XML. So macro, you can put in an XML file. And as you can see on the top, it is a partial uh, section of the macro file that being defined. So under the macro tag, you have the name of the function uh, of the tools or the reusable elements. And then the underneath, it's how you expand it and import in your actual wrapper. So you have to, let's say in our, in this case, we have a top hat underscore macros.xml file. On the top is what's inside that macro files. When you need to use a specific, you know, feature or elements in this case, you need to actually, actually go into the expand, use the expand tag in XML to expand that feature or elements in the wrapper. So that's the usage. So imagine that you will have this multiple tool you under, um, multiple, imagine you have a suite and then you can keep repeating using the same macro and expanding this uh, particular feature or elements in your, in your other wrapper as well, if you're using the same um, macro file. So that how you apply your macro file for, um, for wrapping your tools. So next, this is a Cheetah template. And uh, I just use this as an example. It's nothing to do with the grand plan or not that, but the concept is um, the same. So inside the actual wrapper, you have a command sections, which come with, um, I highlighted in the red box. So that's the beginning of the command sections. And at the end, you have to like finish by another command tag. In between, it contain some cell script command, but in here, let's say we are wrapping the blood tool, uh, block tools, that's a visualization tool for visual visualization uh, metagenomic data. And here, the actual command that you can run in the command line is called put tools view. And the rest is just a parameter 
and along with some of the um, uh, some variable defined in the wrappers. And in the blue box, which is a cheetah templates that you know give you some flexibility to handle you know some uh, parameters that define in this wrapper. So you can sometimes some of the parameters are conditional. So you, it gives you some flexibility to handle this kind of like conditional uh, parameters using the cheetah templates. So at the end of this section, this tool has an input as a JSON file and output um, directory. And then inside that directory contain the actual output file name, but it's only visible to the tools at this stage. You need to copy it to um, the variable defined in the wrapper in order to be shown in the Galaxy history. So this is a kind of like really simple sim, um, uh, example, but it actually include everything that we need to understand what is required to uh, put into your uh, command section. So next quickly, just uh, cover the um, another type of uh, uh, another data type or tool or whatever you call that supports by supported by the galaxy. Um, so if you actually can't find the tools available through the Conda management system, um, the other workaround, which is, you know, you can find it through the Docker. But before I go into Docker, I will explain how you can use this tool um, when wrapping um, this tool for galaxies. So which is the requirements tag. So on the top, for example, um, the package R, RT, you know, um, the R package that you see here required to run this tool. You have um, to define that required type equal to package and the version that you gave for that particular tool. So you can go on, um, you know, this list can grow. It's not necessarily just one tool. You can actually grow, like, you know, add another tool in here as long as you need to, those two to be included for your wrapper. But, and um, I give you another example underneath, which is the SAM tool. So to, this is a commonly used tool for um, uh, data alignments, aligning your data to uh, reference genome. So this is tool being used and how you get, need, how to get this tool to be installed in Galaxy, that's the tag that you need to include in your wrapper. So you have a requirement type and version 0.1.18. So same two, Galaxy will understand, okay, oh, you want this tool to be installed and run this uh, wrapper? Yes, I can do that. And then it will be installed in the Galaxy uh, environments after um, you have defined this requirement section in your wrapper. So next, I this is um, um, getting more and more um, attention and used by Galaxy lately. Um, um, the container image is actually a standalone application. It's isolated from the OS or host OS as you will. Um, so Galaxy also support this type of um, uh, requirements. As you can see, the def definitions and are totally different from you know, the package that available on Conda. So if you want, for example, I have listed two examples here. On the top is actually um, the requirement you need to say this is a container type instead of the package type. So the container type is equal to Docker. Then you provide 
um, the Docker link with the versions. And in this case, it's Cell Ranger developed by the Brook Institute. Of course, before you define this in your wrapper, making sure this tool is available on either Docker Hub or key.io. So if not, you can't use this in your wrapper. And you have to create your own Docker image if it's not available. Underneath the second example in this Docker um, example. So same as above, like con container type, Docker, key, and bio container and fast QC. Um, yep, it's also a different URL because they're actually owned and developed by different developers. So this is actually a bio containers uh, developer that maintain the tools here. And the cumulus is actually, you know, the Brook Institute um, develop, uh, development groups. They wrap the cell ranger for single cell. They, default, they, they have their own Docker there and we can use that as well if it's public. So just making sure it's also public as well. If actually it's private, you probably wouldn't see this available through this URL. So that's the difference between using the Conda package as well as Docker inside your wrapper. And however, it makes the wrapping your tools really easy. You do not have to rebuild it from the code, uh, source code as long as they're actually in this uh, manage, um, package management system or Docker container. Yep, you can good to go. You can you need to only focus on wrapping your tool. You do not have to worry about you know um, if this tool is available on Conda or this tool is available on uh, Docker. And then you can you can only focus on testing the tool through a command line, running it and integrate in galaxies. So in the next few slides, just want to introduce with, um, get into, not introduce, but we need to get into details of uh, what data type that Galaxy supports. In here, in this like XML example, you can see that grand plan um, in the command sections come with you know the DPI um, parameters, as well as you know um, the input trees uh, parameters in the black box. So what it what it means here that you need to define the inputs within the inputs uh, text or syntax or the format or XML formats in order um, for the grand flame got pi recognize it. Otherwise, uh, the grand flame has no idea um, where to find these inputs. So in the input format, you need to make sure that you have a dollar sign in front of the input underscore tree, even though you define the input in, within the input type uh, into syntax. So you can't actually just use the input underscore tree in the command sections, making sure you have a dollar signs there. And the next is the parameter argument, which the, the options or parameter as you will. And you can see the arguments like, you know, that dash, DPI, type, integer is optional. So if it's not optional, you just ignore, you could, do not have to put an optional tag there in in that in, in there. And then the label is up to you, but I uh, suggest to follow making sure that you know it makes sense to the user and the help sections uh, in the parameters as well. So underneath um Quickly, just kind of expand a little bit on the parameters type. It's come with different types. It support data, data collections, you know, integer flow, text select, Boolean, color, you know, data underscore column, and etc. But 
the most important program that we need to uh, we will use or see often like data, data collections, integer flow, text, and select a boolean. That's it. And then the rest is actually just, yeah, unless you're actually developing really something really complicated that you, you, you need to use. Otherwise, that's enough for um, developing or wrapping your first tool. This slide is actually a first slide of introducing um, the parameters web that we use in the input of every uh, SML or Galaxy wrapper. So it, what it looks like on the top and what's behind or what's in the XML um, format. So as you can see, um, the input tag and parameter and data, that's the type. And in on the Galaxy interface, what you would see is actually the input with the label and um, a three type of data set selection. Um, I'm going to move my mouse here. One is a single data set. And then this is a multiple data set that allow you to select if we have a multiple data set. And this is a data collections. So basically, you can um, think that um, data collection as a folder in Windows. So it's actually contained a lot of files in that folder. So Galaxy has that mechanism to um, detect if you have a data collections in the history. Um, of course, like, you know, allow you to upload and, you know, do things, but I'm not going to go into details here. We, we rarely use it and don't work, encourage people to use these features. We always actually ask people to, hey, you know, you up your data there in the history and use a selection here. So, yeah, the parameter data type one, which is the data type. So data is equal to data. So, and then it will actually show up in here, um, real um, the Galaxy interface. So parameter data type two, and as you can see on the screen, so it allowed you to define um, integer or flow. So sometimes um, you just need to de define your parameter as an integer, like the size on here on the top, the like size of the output image, how big you want to define um, the size of the image that you want to produce. So there's actually say look seven here, there's a size, but Again, so as a reminder, you need to making sure these parameters are actually available for the tools that you are wrapping. So without that, um, you can't, you, it's, it, you wouldn't be able to use these parameters. Or I, I mean, you still can use the parameter, but it's not, you know, the tool won't work. Or the wrapper will give you some uh, um, uh, fail to run a message, say, look, you know, I can't find this parameter. So making sure that you know you touch your tool through the command line, find out what parameters you want to wrap, and then how you're gonna wrap how you can wrap it. So this is the actually like tells you how to wrap this. So basically, if you want to wrap the integer, you have to in the parameter sections in the XML file. So which is in the uh, black box here, say you know you give it a name. Um, what's the data type you have? To Give it a data type, which is integer in this case, and what the initial value, right? So you, you can actually, you know, put it blank. You can just barely able to double quotes without anything. Yep, it's okay. And just to avoid the human error without inputting anything, sometimes it's a good practice, a best practice, putting something there to making sure that one, no human error input. Second, you know, um, avoid um, um, just some indicator or the hint to the to the user what should go in there. So sometimes it's really important to provide value or any indicator. So um, I myself when I wrapping the tool, I would actually 
try when I design the wrapper, I would just think, no, you know, should I try to avoid human error or should I put it somewhere better? So that's always back in my head. Next, um, no surprise, you can uh, pro, uh, you can make your um, data data type as a flow, which is kind of double in the computer world. So at the bottom, they have um, not the bottom, but here you can see, you know, the sequence identity threshold, 0.9, probably 90 percent, and then you get like a slice, and you have some help section on the help text help text underneath, and tell like you know this is actually just provide additional information to the user. So this is a global sequence identity, number of identical alignment position divided by the full length of shorter sequence. So immediately the user, oh, okay, I understand. And I know this tool. So they will just say, okay, um, um, to put in like, uh, they can adjust uh, the floating point here. So what's uh, in the XML? So the parameter name, um, making sure that do not use dot, dot, dot. It's just an example here, making sure you always give it a variable name because this name will be used in the command sections. Otherwise, like the Galaxy doesn't know what you, what's this dot, dot, dot. So making sure that you gave it a name for this parameter. And type flow, of course, minimum value. Yep, you can actually have a point five. And yeah, it's the sometimes two has their own little, you know, considerations by not going beyond. Um, they will set the boundary of certain values. So this is actually, it seems like, you know, you can actually define here the minimum value, not uh, smaller than 0.4, maximum is only one, right? So the, that, the defined value would be um, 0 0.9. Of course, you come in a label, help sections, making sure you put in something there as well. So this slide just lets you know that, yes, yeah, it's, it's allowed to define a parameter uh, using integer and flow. Data type three. So um, yes, um, that allows you to put in text and it's really straightforward. The data type is equal to text. So no surprise. And for the next one, um, it's actually is quite um, often to see people like to have a selection and then it go into the conditional sections like if statement in the command sections in the in the wrapper so we, some of the tools allow you to produce different data type in this example if you use the select parameters then the interface you can see allow you to select different you know data type or any parameter you want to use or apply for to to the uh, tools. So when you select, you see the drop down list and inside the XML page underneath. So the sections that parameter, data type, select, blah, blah, blah. And then options. In this case, you know, you just allow you to select um, the data type for the image you want to produce for, you know, certain tools. So it actually set up like PNG, a lot into output PNG and ESP or SVG. So as you can see in the PNG part in the XML sections, selected equal to true. It means that's default by default when you actually use this tool on the Galaxy, immediately you will see the output will be PNG uh, listed or selected. Um, on the interface, unless you want to change it to other um, output type, then you can actually go and click, and then there's a drop down menu immediately and let you select, allow me to select EPS or SVG. So that's the function of select um, parameters in the XML. So this is another data type, um, also a select data type, but this time, it formatted as a value button. So the only difference in the XML page is actually the display, the, um, the mouse that I'm showing here. So after the data type, type is select, and the display is equal to value. 
and then the interface will immediately show you that you know which uh, of the so, uh, option that you want to select. So it's actually just you know, select minimum. And because in the XML, by default, select is equal to true is minimum. And this is really another um, interesting select type. So this time it's give you the option by select multiple input or no multiple output or input as well sorry yeah that goes both way um i'm not going to go into detail about the output but this is actually the selected input so you can say look you know i want to actually like run this parameter and you know providing to you the the uh the tools that uh you are wrapping or the tools already wrapped so this is the interface that you you are seeing so you allow you to select all this parameter and the only difference between the last two slides they're all the select type, but the only thing changes here is just the multiple equal to true. So it allows you to select multiple things at once. As you probably, you know, familiar with, you know, the select that's equal to true uh, flag here. So it's, if you actually want just to show or uh, give the user an idea of what they can select from, you probably can actually show, okay, this is the type, all the data type you can, all the input or parameter you can select. So it should just show up in the interface and the user can remove what they don't want to show or what they don't want to be part of the running process. So this is click on the, the, the button here on X, just remove them from the selection. So it's handy, easy, but it also give it the user a sense of, what's av available for them to select or deselect from the process, from the running tools when to, you know, when submitting the job. So data type six is a really common one and people can, you know, uh, you always have the brilliant uh, data type for all the pro computer programs. So it, it's really straightforward. The type is equal to Boolean. You come with like two different, uh, some differences here is the check flag and the value on um, false value. So check, you can say this, as you can see, this is actually generate statistic file. Unchecked means no, I don't want to generate any statistic file for this tool that I'm running. And in the XML page or XML file, then you can see the parameter setting here is like checks equal to false. If you want to make it by default, it should be, uh, you want to uh, say, I, I want to generate this statistic file. You can actually just change the check equal to true. And yeah, it will actually generate um, um, the statistic files. Um, and the true value can be anything because it's really based on the tools that you want. In this case, or for this particular example, true value is actually dash dash log that will be captured, recognized by the tool itself. Sometimes different tools might have a different values. They have to say, okay, true value equal to no or true value equal to yes, whatever. So you just need to actually investigate your 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 tools or through the command line carefully before you kind of like you know provide this value in in the sml file yes boolean data type is allowed to 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 include uh in the um, um the wrapper so this is actually a, a bit a tricky one i would say and Unfortunately, it's not too big enough. I mean, the diagram, um, the figures, um, the conditional, and we use a lot for complicated, for advanced tool because we want um, certain data type can use certain parameters. So it's actually end up with a different sections um, here. It's a, if you look at closely on the top one here, um, it's a single or a pair and input reads. 
So in this case, it's a pair is actually like the input is going to be pair, pair um, data, the inputs. And the next one, which is the forward um, end, and the bottom one and the reverse end. And on the other hand, it allows you to select on this um, single end data type, which once you switch it from the pair to single, immediately the um, the bottom one, the forward, uh, the reverse end disappear. So that actually avoid the human error by input um, pair and data to run the single end um, to run this on a single end mode, right? So conditional allows you to, uh, to do that by, okay, in the XML page, inputs, and then you have to define conditional flag or syntax and give it a name. And then you have options, not different than what we've seen before. However, there's an additional section here say, look, you know, if, you, if the user select pair, I gave you two inputs, one's for forward and one's for reverse. If actually the user select um, single, it means a single end input, and then I only provide one um, input parameter. So immediately that kind of avoid human error. Otherwise, like, you know, people say, oh, I need to still put in why I have like two inputs if I actually only select a single uh, end input files, right? So it's really useful. And it's not only apply here, it apply a lot of different way. And data type eight. So let me explain what this uh, slide, what's the input and what it means here first. So in here, you have a seri uh, series data, you input as basically you have a, a tablet format as a master table that contain all the values probably in, in, in this tablet file, it contains multiple columns represent different time point. And each time point, you want to create some plots. So here you can actually say, look, you know, um, I want to select column one, but underneath is also column one, but you know, you can select column two you know, for different uh, time series. Um, however, sometimes you do not want to plot the additional column, right? So basically you can, you, if you uh, use the repeat uh, data type, then the minimum input can be one. The maximum input can be, you know, um, a lot. You can have 10, whatever. You can keep clicking the repeat um, so, uh, button, not the button, but here it depends on how you define it. It's called insert uh, series. So in the XML page, it does a for loop basically. And in the input sections, you can see that's a repeat and series title, input, tablet formats, and data column, and so on and so forth. So it's no magic, but you know, the challenge is how we wrap the tool and what how we actually design um, the input. So it's important and a little bit challenging as well by using the repeat for wrapping certain things. It's challenging in terms of troubleshooting. So um, yeah, repeat, good and bad. All right, example output. Um, already introduced you in the beginning of the slide. So this is the history that you, know, you get your outputs in the history. Um, so everything's uh, green uh, card, it means you have, uh, the tool has successfully produced the outputs. Otherwise you will, see, you will see um a red card listed in the history. So in this case, of course, you can see all the screen. It means like the output number nine and 10 are successfully 
produced by you know the galaxy running uh, grand flame. So in the output sections underneath, uh, as an XML format, you can see there's actually data name. Uh, I mean the out output tag. Inside the output tag, you need you need to define data name, tree format, text, and label two dot name. It means that you know Galaxy code base will understand um, what tools that you use to run this job. And um, on strings, it's just another variables that Galaxy understand. As you can see, that's like export to um, brand flank, export probably the sub, um, the, the two dot name uh, thing, uh, grand flank and the on string. But here it's just to making sure that the output makes sense to the user because otherwise like the user might not be able to find um, the output if the output list keep growing in one history. So it's a best practice to use two dot name and on strings in the label sections um, inside the output. So for the next output, which is number 10, you see the data um, annotation and uh, label two dot name on annotation. So the two start name is frame flame, then on strings is um, from, from this part. Okay, the output example number two, and this is a little tricky. And uh, if you ever go into the advanced um, sections, you probably need to use this one. Sometimes you do not want to actually produce um, all the outputs. You only want to select, you want, only want to produce the output that you want by selecting um, um, from the inputs, right? So the filter flag allows you to do that. So it will actually, whatever you select on the top in, um, in the input sections, in the output section will actually understand if you put in a filter tag, will understand, oh, you only select the PNG. So I would actually, the tool, um, the wrapper, Galaxy understand this XML code and only produce the PNG instead of generating both of them in the history. It doesn't make sense if you only select PNG and also if produce both of them, it doesn't make any sense, right? One of definitely if you select PNG, you would not, even though you produce um, the PDF without the filter tag included, then the history have an empty PDF files because you only select um, the PNG as an output. So filter text is really important. So it's depend on um, how you implement it and, and how many number of output you want to produce. So filter text is 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 the is the tag that you want to use in inside um the galaxy uh wrapper. If you want to know more about um the additional SML tag, please go to this uh website or link that in here to scroll down and look for the additional tag to uh for the tool wrapping. Today I've given you a an overview of the process of getting your tools into Galaxy and the different parameters you can play with. In the next video, we go into more detail about the process of building your SML in Plot Nemo. Um, thank you for watching.